today's video, we're going to be updating the SYNC 3 system in the 2017 Raptor, uh, same thing for 2018, to SYNC 3.0. So this is the newest update, which just came out about a week ago uh, from Ford. Uh, this is coming from the 2.3 update. Um, what's new with it? Nothing really important. General improvements to CarPlay, Android Auto, um, and then other just general things. You're not going to notice any huge differences um, with the display uh, or whatever what information you see, uh, but there's no reason not to update. Uh, just be prepared, prepared to take up to an hour for this. So also, it does not like finding it over Wi-Fi. Uh, also, my 2.3 update didn't like finding over Wi-Fi. Um, so I recommend using a 32 gigabyte. Um, that's what Ford recommends, even though the files are only about two gigs. Um, flash drive uh, that is formatted to XFAT, so EXFAT, and that uh, with a master boot record part, uh, partition map. To make sure that there's nothing plugged into these ports, even if like you have your lightning cable plugged in, but nothing connected to the end of it, uh, still just unplug it for now. So go ahead and plug in uh, your drive and then just wait for the display. And a message saying updating system, system software. So to get that, you're gonna wanna make sure your vehicle is on, but the ignition does not have to be on. Uh, I'm actually just using a regular backup drive, uh, which I haven't used in years um, to do this. It's uh, USB 3.0. So it should be a little bit faster than just a standard flash drive, which I have lying around here, for instance. Whether that affects the update or not, I'm not sure. I just figured that a backup drive would work, and it does. Now, this could take up to 30 minutes um, or longer. Uh, Ford says it should take about 30 minutes, and then you'll see quickly installation complete. That does not mean it's done. The system is going to reset itself so the system will reboot, uh, which can take a few minutes. And, okay, and also make sure not to use it during the, uh, don't use the system at all during the time, um, just to avoid any possible issues. And then it's also going to put a, give a pop-up requesting that uh, you set up automatic system updates and just click ask me later. Um, then you'll see about 10 minutes later, uh, sync again will display installation complete. Please remove the USB drive and there it's actually complete. So at that point, you're gonna wanna perform an ignition, ignition cycle. So turn the car on, uh, engine on, and then turn it back off. And then you're basically done. Last thing you have to do is just report the installation um, to Ford which you can do from the website. I will give the link to all of this in the description as well as Ford's instructions. Do make sure, uh, now this is just a recommendation. I'm not 100% sure if it matters, but turn off Wi-Fi and Bluetooth for the truck. I leave my Bluetooth off all the time anyways, uh, just because I use CarPlay all the time. Uh, I have my mouth there for my phone. Uh, super nice, you just pop it in, it goes right there, release the phone like that. Either way, um, that just avoids any dis any distractions to the system. It's not going to search for Wi-Fi. Not going to try and connect to a network and check for updates automatically, which rarely works. Um, so yeah, just make sure you disable Wi-Fi wi and Bluetooth. This has actually been only 20 minutes. Uh, the installation is complete. Uh, I can remove the USB device. So this is after it restarted itself. So just make sure to wait for that. Uh, and now I'm just going to cycle the engine. So I'll turn it off. I'm going to remove the USB device as it's said to. Wait for the system to just shut off, door open, remember that. Now let's start the engine. And our new sync system should be done. we can actually see uh, when in general and about sync that we are on the 3.0 version meaning that we have successfully updated so some of the icons are actually different for instance the sound um, and it's 
seems to actually reset all your settings on that. But other than that, um, there's really not much of a difference. So it's just getting info, which is perfectly fine. Um, we're gonna close that, I don't care about that. There also now seems to be a display off feature. If you don't want the display, just press that and it shuts off. If you want to turn it back on, just tap the screen. The slider seems to do absolutely nothing. So that's fantastic. Nothing at all. So we'll just reset that and leave it in the middle. I personally like a dark display, so I'm going to be leaving it dark all the time by changing the mode to night. The last step to the update is to go to your drive and go to sync my ride and you're going to see a .xml file. Now this is on Mac, you'll see this uh, similar thing on Windows as well. And what you're going to do, you're just going to take that file and you're just going to drag that in to over here. Just like that .xml file, and I click choose and then we can see over here. Uh, that's selected the right file and then we're gonna upload the log file and finish the reason why you do this is so that Ford can notify you of the next update and we'll just wait for this to finish and the upload was successful um, that's about all there is to it so you actually get also a splashy new uh, Ford app uh, in CarPlay which is kind of nice and when you enable uh, night mode for the display in settings, CarPlay also becomes dark all the time. I personally just like the look better. I'm waiting for full dark mode on iPhone. But uh, yeah, that's all there is to the update. Again, there's just a few settings you'll, you might have to reset, like sound and whatnot. Um, but otherwise it holds mostly everything. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below and I will respond as soon as I can.